question will do, but I cannot prove anything with, if I don't have a reference point to which I'm going to prove things. And my next slide has to do with, um, oh, I haven't finished this yet. Uh, the, the last constraints will come into the medium constraints. Um, these, have, these are the normal, what you would expect uh, a wireless uh, broadcast um, constraints, uh, the bar constraints to be. Uh, namely, that the, the, uh, you want the, sort of, uh, um, the medium to be promiscuous. Uh, if a node broadcasts something at some point in time, then all its neighbors will receive uh, that at the same time. And essentially, the time taken is bounded, so I want synchrony. I don't want the, this time to blow out of, uh, get, get larger and larger. So I want promiscuous, the medium to be promiscuous. I want the medium to have synchrony. I want bi bi bidirectionality. I can do without the um, interesting models without. But to make life simple, let's assume that the graph is uh, symmetric. Um, and the last one, and I have to deal with this, has to do with limited bandwidth. In other words, if um, within a neighborhood, um, uh, every node starts sort of sending out broadcasting, then what will happen is you will overload uh, the, the medium and uh, you, you will have uh, transmission failure. So these are essentially restrictions, um, constraints as I call them, which somehow try to capture the behavior of a mobile ad hoc network and uh, I, I will be bound by these. And now I will be bound by these, is, uh, sorry, I've jumped a slide. Uh, has, I have to sort of be more specific about this. The constraints actually bound the uh, behavior of the nodes, uh, the nodes which adhere to the rules of this system. But malicious nodes need not adhere to this. You cannot force nodes to have um, transmitters which, with a limited bandwidth or to have weak, uh, low battery or use weak batteries. M malicious nodes may use uh, other systems. So my model is not adequate in the sense that it has defined the, the, the behavior of, if you want, the good nodes of those who stick to the, sort of, the rules of the uh, system, but it doesn't specify the rules of the uh, malicious nodes. So the, the threat model, that has to be defined separately if I want to deal with security issues because security issues will have to deal with malicious behavior. So in particular with mobile ad hoc networks, what the malicious, uh, since I want to capture this, I have to describe what malicious nodes could do, is in, in particular they could use uh, out of system links. They could have a separate wireless system. They could have um, um, a, um, uh, uh, a uh, sort of um, a um, uh, more powerful broadcasting devices uh, um, and, uh, or directional antennas or um, covert channels. Let's use this general term, covert channels which are not in the system. So my definition is complete. It's only half the story. The other half has to do with the threat model. So now I have to define what the malicious nodes can do. And the traditional way of dealing with such uh, a problem is to have a, uh, an adversary who can mastermind the attack, the, the, all the malicious nodes. So the way the, ma the, uh, the adversary deals, uh, uh, attacks the system is through certain nodes. So the uh, adversary has control of some nodes, which are referred to, I shall refer to as faulty nodes. And through these faulty nodes, the adversary can uh, do whatever the adversary wants to do. For example, have the hidden channels, uh, run attacks called wormhole or rushing attacks. I will come back to these later. Uh, they can vary the tra transmission range, direct the transmission range, so not everybody gets it. Or it was replicate. So, the model I will use is due to Hurt Maurer, and it, it's an extension of the so-called um, Byzantine threats model, uh, and in which the, what happens is um, a certain set of subsets of the node space is singled out, and that set is called gamma. The sets of gamma are those that can be corrupted by the adversary. So the adversary at the beginning of the lifetime of the system can choose which node, which set of nodes it will corrupt. Um, once it has chosen, it can't change its mind. It can't choose others. They are fixed for the duration of the system. 
This model is a, not a dynamic, it's a static model. There are variants of it which allow the adversary at regular intervals or at certain intervals to be able to release some malicious nodes back into the honest world and take some others and so change the set. But I'm using this model, the static model one. So the adversary can choose which nodes to corrupt, the set of nodes to corrupt from the set gamma, and this is called a gamma adversary. And uh, the gamma, the adversary corrupts, undermines the functionality or, or frustrates the functionality of the system using these uh, corrupted nodes. Uh, the Byzantine threats model is a special case of it in which the size of these subsets is all upper bounded. Uh, by some number k. Say if k, is, if k is 3, then the adversary can corrupt up to any three nodes it likes. But once it has picked the three nodes, it's stuck with these three nodes. It can't change in this static model. Um, in this, the, the other thing to complete the sort of this definition of the threat model, I just want to refer to, to um, the, the ways the adversary can uh, attack the system. Uh, the attack, one, one is passive, and the other is active. Passive is the sort of least sort of um, um, malicious way or the most benign way. Uh, the, what the adversary just does is eavesdrops uh, on, on what happens, is going on in the network. So it just observes and listens. Um, the active one is what I described. Before. The active one involves dropping packets, snooping, modifying, uh, fabricating, whatever else. Whatever the adversary can get away with it, uh, with whatever is allowed in the threat model, the adversary will do it. Why? Because it wants to sort of frustrate the not normal sort of um, uh, uh, functioning of whatever is happens in the network. Um, and uh, I call nodes which do these nasty things malicious or Byzantine. This, this is the general name. So now I have defined what happens, uh, what a mobile ad hoc network is as a sort of Markov process um, of evolving networks. Uh, I have defined what the enemy can do, what the enemy is bound by, what the threat model is. Now I can define what I mean by saying that something is secure, a pro an application is secure. The kind of applications I have in mind are um, distributed algorithms and in particular, uh, routing algorithms. So what is a routing algorithm? In a routing algorithm, what you do is you try, uh, one node tries to find a, a uh, discover a route to another node, and then use that route to send a packet uh, node relay to relay, by relayed through the nodes to the other destination. Um, the process is a distributed process. Everybody's involved in it. Everybody's involved because the node each node knows only its local uh, neighborhood, its neighbors. It doesn't know and it can't go beyond it. And therefore, it um, um, has to find out from its neighbors what, the st what their neighbors are and so on. So everybody has to participate, at least in that local area, helped out together to find the, 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 the path. And once the path is found, then the nodes on the path have to forward every package received to the next one down the path. And that's a, a typical distributed application. I'll describe, describe my sort of def um, definition, security definition, in terms of um, a distributed algorithm uh, uh, P. Uh, and um, what I will, so this distributed algorithm, if you think about P as being, say, a routing algorithm, what it will do is, um, it will be given as input the source and the destination and the packet that the source wants to send to the destination will work a little bit. Eventually that packet will have to travel to the destination and the destination will have to send back an acknowledgement to the source. And if everything happens, then the source will be happy that the destination got the message, the packet, and the, packet, and the destination will have the packet and the protocol will end in a sort of, um, it will terminate in a success state. So it will say, good, success. Uh, if that doesn't happen, if the node, if the source doesn't get an acknowledgement that the destination has re received the message, then the uh, the um, the protocol won't end in this state. What we